the RGB LED. So the RGB LED stands for red, green, blue LED. So we've discussed the LED before with the long leg and short leg. So this LED is a bit different. It kind of has three LEDs built in one. So you can see it comes with four feet, one, two, three, four. One of them will be longer than the rest, and this is called your common. So it can either be a common cathode or a common anode. So if you've done the LED tutorial, you remember the cathode. If you remember panic, positive is anode, negative is cathode. So cathode means my number two must be my ground. So common cathode means that pin two, that all my LEDs are sharing the same ground. If it was common anode, then all my LEDs would have the same power, same 5 volts or 3.3 volts. So that is what it means by common cathode. And then you can see each leg has a different color. So if I want to put on blue, I just make my blue pin high. Pin 1, I make high, it will turn blue. Pin 3, I make high, it will go green. Pin 4, I make high, it will go red. As easy as that. But what makes these LEDs so cool is you can switch on different colors at the same time. What that means is what happens when I turn my green and red LED on together? You can see a little window. I think you guys know most of the primary colors. Uh, red and green will give me yellow. So if I turn on red and green, I can make yellow. If I turn red and blue, I can make purple or pink. Magnet, make purple or pink. Um, and then green and blue gives me like a light blue. And that's how you can make different colors by having three colors. And this is what makes this LED so cool, is you can play around with different colors. And we will be using this with our photoresistor to change the colors depending on the light. Now that we did the motor, let's introduce a new component called the RGB LED. So the LED, as we mentioned in the previous PowerPoint, it's got three colors with a common cathode. So it's got a common ground. So we got four sides, so we just put all four in the breadboard like this. And you see the legs will spread out a bit. Now that we have the LED in our breadboard, let's connect three buttons to put on the three colors of the LED. As you know the LED, the LED needs a resistor to limit the current. So let's connect our resistor. We will connect the resistor for the blue, green and red part. We connect the resistor just below one of the feet that you want to have the resistor connected to and then we've got our cathode in the middle resistor there on green and then we add our last 220 ohm resistor on red as we mentioned we got a common cathode which means a common ground so the third leg we connect to our ground on the blue rail of the breadboard. So now we just have to connect our buttons. I've got two extra buttons here. Connect. So each button needs power and then the power needs to go to the LED. So I'm going to use an orange cable. You can use any color. I'm just keeping the same color for power to the red side of the breadboard. So I've now got three buttons connected to my power, to the red rail on my breadboard. And now I need to take the power to my LED. So I can do this actually at the bottom because the top and the bottom is connected through the button. So not through the breadboard, but through the button. So the top pin and the bottom pin is connected through the button and not the breadboard. Then we connect it to there. And we connect to the next LED. And the last one, we connect to the last color, which is red. So what should happen now is when I click a button, I should get blue. If I push this button, I should get green. And if I push, the, push this button, I should get red. So now you can actually mix colors. So I have a blue plus green gives like kind of yellow so you can play around with some colors you can see depending what button I push is what color I get so I connected the power to the button the other side of the button 
to the resistor going to my LED. Remember, in the middle of the breadboard, we connect top to bottom. To the side of the breadboard, we connect left to right. Let's add a speaker and make some noise when we put on the blue LED. So here we've got an active speaker. You can see it's got a sticker on. The passive speaker that we'll use to make a keyboard does not have a sticker on. So active speaker, when I give it power, it makes a noise. So you see it has a positive side and a negative side. So let's connect it to our breadboard. So positive, negative. So what we can do on our breadboard is we can also connect many different things on different sides of the breadboard. For example, I've got a wire here connected to a resistor, but I can also connect a wire underneath that wire and connect it to another component on my breadboard. So let's connect that to our speaker. So we want the positive side on that side, and then we need ground on this side. So just double check where the things are. So it's about a two pin difference. So it should be over here. And we connect that to our ground blue rail. Be very careful that this side and this side is not connected. Now you'll see when I push this button, I get red. When I get this button, I get green. And when I push this button, I get blue and a speaker noise. There, you can hear it. So try to build yourself and make some color and make some noise.